Okay, so now we'll look at one basic example of how the nervous system functions, why it um, is of use to organisms that have it. Okay, so a very basic example, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but we'll just remind ourselves about why, why the neurons are needed, why the nervous system is needed in order to make a response to the environment. So here we have heat from a fire, so that is a stimulus. So that's something that's happening in the environment that could affect the survival of this organism. And then um, the stimulus it must be detected. Okay. So the first uh, thing that we need in our system is a sensor. Okay, so there's going to be parts of our body which are specialized to act as sensors, detecting environmental or sometimes even internal um, changes in, in different aspects, such as, uh, or usually it's energy change, so detecting heat, detecting light, detecting pressure, detecting chemical changes. But that's in the environment. The stimulus is in the environment, the sensor is part of the body of the organism. Once the sensor detects the change, it stimulates the sensory neuron. So this is part of our peripheral nervous system. It's a neuron that is responsible for collecting information uh, or collecting impulses from sensors and then passing them down to the central nervous system. Okay, this is our central nervous system. This is our spinal cord. Okay, so the sensor detects the heat, the sensory neuron has impulses that get generated by the sensor, so the impulses are now passing along down this sensory neuron all the way to the spinal cord, the central nervous system right here, so everything here is peripheral nervous system, central nervous system, then the relay neuron, then um, so the impulse then pass results in an impulse generated in the relay neuron and the relay neuron then results in an impulse being generated in the effector neuron so again part of the peripheral nervous system remember we talked about information goes towards the nervous system but then once the appropriate response is um, kind of wired up then the 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 impulse needs to go back out to an effector that's going to effect the change or effect the response. So the relay neuron then results in impulses being generated in the effector neuron. And the effector neuron, in this case, it stimulates the contraction of a uh, flexor, topic seven, flexor muscle okay so you see how this is all wired up that when the impulse passes down along the effector neuron the effector muscle contracts the arm moves away from the thing that could cause it damage the organism survives has a better chance of reproducing as a result and maybe the alleles that resulted in this kind of system uh, then uh, the frequency of those alleles increases in subsequent generations. Okay, so let's just quickly review that. What we needed was a stimulus. Stimulus caused uh, the sensor to detect some change. The sensor detecting the change generates impulses in the sensory neuron. This is important. The sensory neuron um, transmits or allows the impulse to go towards the central nervous system, brain, spinal cord, etc. In a basic reflex, it doesn't need to go to the brain, but but the relay neuron in the central nervous system then um, generates an impulse in the effector neuron, and the effector neuron is directly hooked up to an effector. In this case, the effector is muscle but the, it's the effector that does whatever it does and makes a response. So that's your basic reflex. Now that we understand the role of the neurons, we can start looking into what
what, what the nature of these neurons are and what the nature of the impulse is in terms of resting and action potentials. And again, uh, how does the impulse from one neuron result in an impulse in another neuron? That's essentially what's happening at the synapses. Okay, so that would be next. But then, the impulses are generated because of that in the effector, uh, in the parasympathetic neurons. So impulses move along the parasympathetic neurons. The impulses from the parasympathetic neurons result in the effector neuron to have impulses and the effector neurons are hooked up in, in this case the effector in the eye that's going to make the appropriate response to too much light is going to be the radial no circular muscles okay so the effector neurons are going to cause the circular muscles in the iris they're going to cause the circular muscles in the iris to contract causing the pupil pupil to constrict and when the pupil has constricted less light will come into the eye and then we'll be able to generate an appropriate image. Let's do the same thing, but with too little, too little light. So if there's too little light, then again, that's going to be detected by the retina, fine. We're going to have very few impulses moving down the optic nerve, very few impulses going through the relay neurons, but then it's going to be the sympathetic neurons that in this case are going to act uh, to pass on the impulses to the right effector because we need a different effector this time. So the sympathetic neurons are going to have impulses moving down them after the relay neurons. They're going to be connected to effector neurons that themselves are connected to the radial muscles. Okay, so if there's too little light, we want to contract the radial muscles. And when the radial muscles contract, contract the pupil dilates. The pupil dilates, so our response to too little light is the pupil dilating, allowing more light to come in, again allowing us to generate a proper image on the retina. Okay, so I hope we can see that from the most basic example to uh, the pupil reflex, a similar kind of um, structure is there in the process, sensor, sensory neuron, central nervous system, effector neuron, effector and response. It's, um, but then understand how you adapt that to mention the details of the pupil reflex. Okay, so now that that's done, what we'll do now is look more closely at neurons and how the impulse moves down the neuron and how impulses um, move, from, move from one neuron to the next via synapses.